Hello students, welcome to a lesson through the virtual training center of the Brihan Mumbai Mahanagar Palika. My name is Shraddha teacher and in this lockdown period since we are not able to go to school children, we will be doing many lessons here online through the virtual class. So come on, let's proceed to our lesson for today. A lesson in history of standard 7th and see the name of the lesson is there on the screen for you. It is India before the times of Shivaji Maharaj. Now children, let me show you an image of this very, very famous king of Maharashtra that is Shivaji Maharaj. Now in this particular lesson, we are going to talk about India before the times of Shivaji Maharaj. That means the focus in this entire syllabus this year will be on the life and times of Shivaji Maharaj and how Shivaji Maharaj ruled the state and you will also see that we will talk about how he founded Swaraj and what about the conflict that he had with the Mughals. We will talk about how the Maratha power expanded after the uh, times of Shivaji Maharaj also. So the entire uh, syllabus, history syllabus of standard 7th is focused on the history of our home state that is the state of Maharashtra. Now in this particular chapter we will be not talking much about this great king Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj but we will be talking about the powers which ruled in India before Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Now look at this image which is going on around in your screen. Now this image is of the most you can say powerful or the bravest of all Maratha kings that we know. We cannot just uh, give credit to Shivaji Maharaj as a Maratha king but he was a very famous king of the entire country. Okay, We as an entire nation are proud of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj today for the way he established Swaraj and for the way he treated his subjects equally. He did not have any kind of differentiation as far as the poor people were concerned, the rich were concerned. He did not make any kind of partiality on the basis of religion, etc. Okay, so we are eventually in the coming lessons, we are going to talk about Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. But in this chapter, let us talk about many other great kings of India who ruled before Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. So the first of these, you can say, powers or rulers were the Pal kings of Bengal or we call it as the Pal dynasty. Okay. Now these kings, they ruled in this particular eastern part of India, you can say. All right. And this was a very, very famous dynasty of the 8th century Bengal. And then when you come a little bit to the central part of India, see this is where the Pala dynasty or the Pal dynasty as we call it existed in our country. Now when you come to a little bit central part of India, you had the Gurjara Pratiharas, that is the Gurjar Pratihara power which spread all over the central region of India. When you talk about the central region, then you have parts of Gujarat, parts of Maharashtra, etc. Now, among the Gurjar Pratiharas also, there were some famous uh, Rajput dynasties here. Okay. Now, in the Rajput dynasties, you have the Gadwal dynasty and the Parmar dynasty who were very, very uh, famous and more important among the Rajput dynasties. Now, these, uh, these Rajput dynasties were part of North India. Okay. So, you saw how we started from the east with the Pal dynasty here in this particular picture and we talked about the central part of India which was under the control of the Gurjar Pratiharas. Okay, and then finally we had the northern part of India which was ruled by these Rajput dynasties. Okay, so you can see places like Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, Punjab, all these places they were ruled by the Rajput dynasties. Alright, and when we talk about uh, Rajput uh, kings, one of the most famous of Rajput kings was Prithviraj Chauhan. All right. He was from the Chauhan dynasty and he was a very, very famous king. We have seen movies uh, based on the life of Prithvira Chauhan. We have seen uh, serials based on the life of Prithvira Chauhan. Okay. And he was a very, very valiant king and he tried to defeat or he tried to resist the 
uh, in Muslim invaders who came from the northwestern part of India. Now, one such invader was Muhammad Ghori or Muhammad Ghori as we call him. Now, Prithviraj Chauhan had defeated Muhammad Ghori in the first battle of Tarai. There was a very a huge battle which happened between Muhammad Ghori and uh, Prithviraj Chauhan and Prithviraj Chauhan very valiantly defeated uh, Ghori in the first battle of Tarai. But as it is a very unfortunate situation in India, even today you will see that we are all divided as a nation. Even in that times, we were divided as a nation. The other kings did not support Prithviraj Chauhan. And finally, in the second battle of Tarai, Prithviraj Chauhan had to accept defeat at the hands of Muhammad Ghori. And that is how the rise of Muslim rule happened in India. Okay, so this was one more famous king from the you can say Rajput dynasty or the Raj, one of the famous Rajput kings in India Prithviraj Chauhan and his story. Let us go on and let us move towards the southern part of India. So when you go a little bit towards the south of India you had the Chola dynasty. Can you see the star here on the map uh, for you? So we have the Chola dynasty and we had King Raja Raja I and King Rajendra I, who were very eminent rulers of this Chola dynasty. Okay, Raja Raja I and King Rajendra I. And these were famous uh, dynasties or famous rulers of the state of Tamil Nadu. Now, these uh, Cholas had a very, very strong naval command with them. Okay, they were very strong. The navy was very strong. And therefore, they conquered islands like Maldives and Sri Lanka also. Okay, and uh, then they uh, they showed their naval strength by doing this. So you can see Sri Lanka and Maldives, they were island uh, island countries, and the Chola kings Raja Raja one and Rajendra one, they went on and they even conquered these places. Now remember, children, we are talking about a time which is thousands of years ago. Okay, it must have been extremely difficult for them to cross the sea and to arrange for transport for their soldiers but this is how valiant they were that is the reason we are learning about them isn't it even today now the next king that we want we will talk about is the king from karnataka now the karnataka the state of karnataka was under the rule of the hoysala dynasty or the hoysala rule was in karnataka Okay. And now there was a very, very uh, famous Hoysala king and the name of this king was King Vishnu Vardhan. So King Vishnu Vardhan, he ruled the almost the entire part of Karnataka. He conquered it and he ruled it. King Vishnu Vardhan. Okay, this is the picture of King Vishnu Vardhan for you. Then we had one more very, very famous uh, dynasty, you can say, which extended from the north up to the south. So till now, the dynasties that we talked about, they were, some of them were located in the east of India, some of them were in the central part of India, that is the Palas were in the east of India, the Gurjar Pratiharas were in the central part of India, okay. Now these particular, this particular dynasty, there is a Rashtrakut dynasty, you will see that their rule, it extended from the north, that is Kanauj in the north, right up to Rameshwaram in the south of India. So that is how they uh, ex vast and expansive their rule was. And what was the name of this dynasty? It was the Rashtra Kuta dynasty or the Rashtra Kuta dynasty. When we uh, say things in English, we always uh, tend to add an A there. Okay, for example, Pal, we call it as Pala. So that way. So we had the Rashtra Kuta dynasty. And uh, the kings, that is, of the Rashtrakuta dynasty, they were very, very, you can say, brave kings. So it was during the rule of King Krishna III that the Rashtrakuta dynasty was further extended. And he went on and he went up to the region of Allahabad. That is, he almost uh, touched the north of India, northern territory of India also. He crossed, okay. He went up to the state of Uttar Pradesh. So these were one more very formidable power in our country before the rules or before the times of Shivaji Maharaj. Now, when we come to the western part of Mahara, India, that is western, we come to western Maharashtra. Okay, slowly and slowly we have covered the entire, you can say, subcontinent of this country of India and we have tried to see in different parts of this country which were the different people who were ruling. So, now let us come 
and talk about the powers which were there in Maharashtra. So, before that, we will talk about the, finally, the dynasties that we talked about till now. So, we had the Pala dynasty, you can see how they are extending in the eastern part of the country. Then we had the Gurjar Pratiharas in the central part of the country, the Rashtrakutas, okay, we also talked about the Rajputs, all right. Now we come to another important power in our country. See, these are the three, uh, you can say, dynasties of those times, the Palas, the Rashtrakutas and the Gurjar Pratiharas. These were the Shilahara kings or the Shilahars, the Shilahar dynasty. They emerged in the western part of Maharashtra. So they were confined. Now the other dynasties you will see they spread over the borders of the states. But the Shilaharas, they were more or less confined to this particular area in Maharashtra. Okay. And uh, there were three dynasties of the Shilaharas. One of them they ruled over Thane and Raigad and some of them ruled over the North Konkan. So they were divided into three parts. Alright. The three dynasties of the Shilaharas. Then we will talk about the most prosperous of all dynasties before the period of Shivaji Maharaj and that were the Yadavas. Okay, So the Yadava kings of Maharashtra were you could say the last most famous rulers just before the times of Shivaji Maharaj. So after Shivaji Maharaj if you could say that there was a period which was very prosperous and very glorious for Maharashtra it was during the rule of these Yadava kings of Maharashtra and then there was a very famous you can say uh, Yadava king and his name was Billam the fifth all right and he was a ruler a very one of the famous rulers of the Yadava dynasty and he was uh, his capital was a place near Aurangabad called as Deogiri and he extended his rule beyond the river Krishna also that is he went towards the south of India also. So this was one of the golden periods you can say in the history of Maharashtra just like we study about Shivaji Maharaj that is the rule of the Yadavas in the state of Maharashtra. Okay. So you can see this is an image of Pillam the fifth. Now children, those times there were no uh, cameras, there were no still cameras, there were no video cameras. So these are all paintings or pictures which were drawn by people. Okay, And they were passed on from generation to generation. So these are all examples of, you can say one kind of written source of history. Alright, or if it is an object, it is a material source of history. Why are we linking it like this? Because we just learnt in the previous lesson about the sources of history. Okay. So this period or the Yadava period is considered as the golden period of Marathi literature as well as Marathi language. So it was this period that the person, the great, you can say, person who contributed a lot towards Marathi language and literature, Mahanubhav Panth, and the person who gave a lot of movement to the spiritual wave in Maharashtra and his name was Mahanubhav Panth. It was in this period during the Yadava period that he lived. And the very famous uh, you can say religious or spiritual movement of Maharashtra that is the Varkari movement. Now even today you see the Varkari movement. You see these thousands and thousands of people uh, marching towards uh, Pandharpur during the time of Ashadi Ekadashi, which happened just a few days ago, isn't it? So this Varkari movement also emerged during the rule of the Yadava kings, okay? So this is a very, very important, you can say, part of the history of Maharashtra or the history of India before the times of Shivaji Maharaj. Now, this lesson we have to do it in two times, okay? This is the first part of the lesson today second part of the lesson we will be doing next week but before that let us take a quick look at what the Varkari movement is I told you how people they carry idols they carry uh, flags they carry musical instruments and they sing praises of Lord Vithal okay and they march towards Pandharpur to celebrate this uh, youth festival of Asha and even at other times uh, days which are supposed to be auspicious, these people they visit the uh, various temples, the Varkari movement.
okay these are people who are devoted to god all right so this was about this lesson today children so what all did we talk about today we learned various points today we talked about the pala dynasty we talked about the rajputs about the cholas hoysala kings rashtrakutas and the shikaras so this was one part of the rulers of india before the times of shivaji maharaj next time we will continue and complete this lesson thank you so so children wasn't that a wonderful video and did you enjoy watching it so if you want to watch more such videos in future then please like this video and also subscribe to our channel the mcgm portal for education and also hit the bell button so that you get notified whenever i upload a new video here thank you so much for now let's meet again soon